Gotcha. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the Open Road Podcast. Today's guest is none other than my cousin, Melanie Garcia. How are you? Another cousin. Another I'm doing one. good. How are you? <laughs> <laughs> so, Melanie um, has gotten quite a following on TikTok. Yes, um, I have. With your art. <laughs> and uh, I know there's quite a few of her people that want to see this interview. So, welcome to the podcast. Uh, tonight we're going to be drinking wine. Um, Five Star Plumbing Houston has donated this wine. Well, he didn't donate. It. He came on the podcast a couple months ago and gave me the wine. So tonight we drink for it. the special people. Right, special the people. one person, <laughs> the one special person that comes on this podcast. Let me see if I can even open this damn thing because I'm not good at that either. But uh, but yeah, let me get this popping, um, and Literally. then we'll start the conversation. Okay. Um, you drink wine all the time? I don't drink. Oh shit! Like. Rarely. Oh, yeah, this is, we're going to have to restart this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> this is another blooper. <laughs> I guess we're not restarting it. Now we'll get this thing open. Oh, what's happening? Yeah, for those that are wondering, I, I don't I don't really drink wine or anything. I was like, oh, you need to finish that sentence because you did drink. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> We may not be drinking wine tonight. I don't, and no, that I is okay. Thing. No, I do not. It's <laughs> just the wrong person. Oh, all right, all right. I see how it works. I see how it works. You start it this way, and then you and, do it. Uh, look at that. Yeah, I don't. I don't pop bottles. I, I just. I don't have it like that in my world. <laughs> Best I do is like a fucking Corona or something. <laughs> there you go. Wow. Damn. Look at that. Oh shit. The there's, little there's stuff <laughs> everywhere. <clears throat> Excuse me for that, but we'll be all right. <laughs> all right, all right. So, yes, Five Star Plumbing Houston. Check him out on Instagram. Um, good friend of mine, Eric. He runs that there, and that's his thing. So. Oh, nice. So, to begin with, uh, <clears throat> how did you begin that? How did you start? How did that idea come about? So... My mom fixed her garden with a crap ton of rocks. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I was extremely bored. Okay. And I was like, hmm. What would happen if I were to paint her rocks and just be like, what if she, until she notices, you know? Right. And I was like, oh, let me actually put this on TikTok. Like, why not? And the min the first video that I put were like the elephants from Dumbo. Uh -uh. And it was like, and it was on Mother's Day too. So I was like, this can be like her Mother Day gift. And so it was the elephant with, like, the mother's trunk, and she was, like, laying on there or whatever. And the minute I put it, it was, like, 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 comment, comment. I was, like, oh, shit. Like, what did I just start? No, like, really? <laughs> I was, like, holy crap. Okay. <laughs> and then. Um, so it's kind of, like, it just by accident. It really was by accident because I, I was, like, I, I don't think this is going to, like, hit or anything. You, but, you didn't care. Like, I mean, yeah, it wasn't, like, a I need to do this video for likes or, like, to get followers or anything right. like that. It was just, like, hey, let me put this on TikTok. Let's see. Let's see what happens. And sure enough, I was, like, oh. So that now first... I can officially not stop. I have to continue. <laughs> right. Like, you feel compelled now? Yeah, I was like, oh. <laughs> so, like, out of that first video, when you, how, like, how fast were the views coming in? They were coming pretty fast. So, like, the second video that I posted the next day, it was, so the first video was, like, a 1.1 million views. Oh, my God. Yeah. And then the second one was, like, almost 3,000 or thirty thousand or three hundred thousand k views, and then like it just kept going, and then TikTok was like, if I make one minute videos, I can get paid for it. So then I started making one minute videos, and the views kind of started going a little bit more down. Mm -hmm, obviously, because mm -hmm. they're a minute, nobody wants to watch a minute video. Right. But much less a, still much less a an hour, an hour long hour. podcast. <laughs> much less an hour <laughs> podcast. But either way, either way. <laughs> but yeah, I was like, oh well, it happens. So, I mean, I still get views, just not as much as I did in the beginning. Right. And and, and that's okay. I, it wasn't. It's, you're showcasing your art, your yeah. talent. And I think the most important thing is, like, I, I, I've known you my entire life. Mm -hmm. Your entire life, right? Not mine, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> but, but. I was like, born in 2023. Right, right. Yeah. <laughs> like early. But I, I get where you're coming from. Like, I think it's more important uh, what you're doing. And 
if a million people see you, cool. And if a thousand people see yeah. you, cool. And if 10 people see you, cool. You really just need to be touching even one person at a time. Mm-hmm. That's good enough, right? Like, so I think that's awesome. In So how long have you been doing the rock paintings at, uh, at this point? I think I'm on day 130 something. Wow. And is it your account on TikTok? Is it your mom's? It's mine. It's yours. Okay. Yeah. So your account on TikTok, how many followers do you have right now? 53k oh nice yeah. nice um and you know i was talking to your mom not too long ago a couple of maybe a week ago a couple mm-hmm. of days and she was telling me that you get requests on on these rocks so how does that work see that was very interesting i, d- I wasn't expecting that yeah but um they request like for example if i paint because i like if i paint scooby-doo or something they're like oh can you make me one um like a medium size or like small mm-hmm. size or something like that. Or they have something I haven't painted before that they're interested. The ones that I've gotten the most of are like ones that like have lost somebody. Really? So like they want to put those rocks in like the people, their loved ones graves. Oh wow. So those are the ones that I've gotten the most of. Mm-hmm. Other ones are like for their children to like make their little garden or something like that. But so like, and those people that have passed away, obviously, most of them are kids, maybe. And Sadly, yeah. Yeah. Um, what's like, what are the requests like? If you could, I, I mean, I'm sure they all touch you in a way. Mm-hmm. Um, what's one that really touched you, you know, like maybe or a few or like wh- which one stands out to you maybe the most, right? Mm, there's two that I can come into my head right now. Uh, one of them was that sh- they lost their son, if I'm not wrong. It was a while back, mm-hmm. so I don't really remember if it was a son or daughter. But um, she wanted three small rocks of Winnie the Pooh, like baby Winnie the Pooh. Mm-hmm. And it was to put on her grave. And then she ordered again three more characters from Winnie the Pooh. And I think it was like two-year-old oh. that had died. So it was really, really young. And um, then recently... It was actually a plexiglass that I had or uh, an order for. And she wanted me to do the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, like the them sliding down the slide. Okay. And it was her son. So, like, her son was at the end. And her son was three, two, two or three years old that had died. Mm. And he had gotten meningitis. Wow. So, he really fought and obviously he didn't make it. Wow. So, she had me make that for him. So, both of those stories have hit, like, I was like, oh. How does that make you feel? Hard. Yeah? Yeah. Especially now that I have, like, my own nieces. Right. So it's like... Mm. Like, um... It's really sad. How does it make you feel that complete strangers have seen your art <coughs> and are requesting it? Like, what's that... Knowing that you're touching people out mm-hmm. there, like, what... How does that make you feel, you know? Very grateful. Yeah. For my talent. Yeah. Yeah. Because it is. It's a talent. It's a skill. Like, you know, not many people can do that. You know, yeah. I think that's amazing. Um, what about as far as like maybe most famous? Have you had famous people reach out or? <laughs> Actually, in the first video, um, I had gone back to like re-comment on comments to like try to get people to come back. So like I would be like, oh, I already did this one or. Uh, that's the next one I'm going to do. Or like I use their comment on a video that I'm going to do next. And I was like looking through them and I saw that there was this one name that had like the verification on it. And mm-hmm. I was just like, who the fuck is this? <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> who are you? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I, 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 I don't usually cuss a lot. but like. <laughs> I'm like, um, I clicked on their thing and I was just like, I don't know who this person is. Like I've never seen them before. And I, for some reason, I feel like they... I should know them because um, on their bio, it had like Rivera or whatever. And I was just like, Rivera. Whatever. yeah. And I was just like, OK. And then um, I was like, man, let me go back. And like I went back and I, I was looking through their videos and they had a video of Jenny Rivera. It ended up being Jenny Rivera's one of her daughters. Oh, wow. It was um, Jack. Jackie, Chiqui, somebody like that. No, not Chiqui. Okay. The other one. <laughs> but it ended up being her and i was just like whoa <laughs> i'm like whoa what what was the comment what, what? her she was asking for a precious moments rock 
Oh. And I ended up using her comment and making a video, and it was like the I made a precious angel, like the precious moments angel. Okay. And like obviously in honor of her mother. And I was like, if you want it, like I'll send it to you. Um, just let me know. And I mean, I didn't receive anything else, but wow. I was like, in case it's out there, in case she wants it. Maybe but I was just this. like, whoa. <laughs> that's uh, that's pretty cool. I know. Um, cool. I was like, wow. Okay. <clears throat> so. This is all going on. Um, you're TikToking. You're doing that part. Mm -hmm. But outside of TikTok, let's rewind a bit. Mm -hmm. Right? So you were born 2000? Mm -hmm. Wow. I'm, I'm getting old. Mm -hmm. um, My body's telling me I'm getting old. Right, right. <laughs> so, you know, you come from a good family. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure you, on your videos, do you come out in them? Like, do you, does your face show? Because all the ones I've seen, it's just the rock, the mm -hmm. rock, and, like, what you're going, and then, like, you know, you move on to the next one, and, like, the comments, and, like, mm -hmm. like I, you know, I don't think I've seen one with your face on it yet. If you go all the way to, like, the beginning, I was doing dancing videos. Oh, okay. So, like, you can see me in those, and, like, I would try to do, like, every now and then, like, a funny one, like, where you use, like, the funny sounds or whatever, but then, obviously, like, those weren't hitting. And I was just like, eh, those are for fun. It doesn't really matter. Right, right. And then that's when I started doing the rocks. And since those hit, I was like, okay, well, let me just continue this. I can't stop now. Right. <laughs> um, so, especially if I'm touching a lot of people and a lot of people are wanting me to continue, I was like, I have to. Yeah, yeah. Like, But it's for a good cause, you know? Like, Yeah. Um, I like the Ghostbuster one. Like, that. <sighs> Thank you. It's <laughs> my favorite, right? Like, you did one for me, and I have it there. Uh, mm -hmm. I appreciate that as well. Yes. And... We'll show kind of what you brought me tonight, and uh, yeah, it's not finished, but uh, no, it looked pretty cool because <laughs> <coughs> so I'll do the outline once it's dry while we're talking. So, Go show back. show the camera your hands. I just <laughs> 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 so, so so the artist, right? So, that's normal this for is how you. you know, it's normal for me. I'll have paint on my face, I'll have paint on my hands, on my elbows. And I'll just go about my day with the paint all over me. So <laughs> you should see like some of my pants that I sleep in. They have paint everywhere. Oh my goodness! <laughs> um, now there might be, there's people watching this one, right? So, mm -hmm. um, I'm sure there may be a young man out there that may take interest in you, right? So let's touch um, that a little bit. I'm um, single and we're ready to mingle. <laughs> <laughs> so you are single. I am. Yes. Okay. Now check this out though, because she may be single, but. She has two brothers, right? Yes, I do. Um, one of them is a cop. The other <laughs> one's a firefighter, right? So, so you want to date my cousin, you know? Like, <laughs> make sure uh, you come with your A game, right? Like, yeah. Which and is then good. I have cousins that are cops <laughs> yeah. and uh, <laughs> crazy ex military. <laughs> <laughs> like that's so cool, right? Like, um, so have you dated? I mean, look, I'm gonna tell you straight mm -hmm. up, right? Like the way I've seen you, right? Like, like you never stop being 15, right? Like, like that's my like my perception right mm -hmm. like 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 you do get the middle chiquita right like mm -hmm. my like my baby cousin right and then it's like damn it she's 20 something right mm -hmm. like so what has your love life been like non-existent really? <laughs> okay, okay. i've never had a boyfriend before and i'm not really in a rush for it got you okay especially because like i'm still trying to figure out what i'm gonna do with my life why put like somebody else in it when i don't even know what i'm doing like very you know cool very cool so i mean if it's gonna come it's gonna come if it's not uh, it's not a priority i think that that requires like a lot of self-respect to mm -hmm. begin with um but that just goes to show you like the upbringing you had right mm -hmm. which i think is so important um and one thing i love about your videos and like you're not using body and and and, and sexual allure to mm -hmm. like i i know why some women do it right mm -hmm. but like I, I don't know, like, I, yeah, it's I, not the way I to understand. go, right? Like, yeah. and, and that's cool that they do it. Like, hey, man, like, mm -hmm. you got that, and that's the way you want to go. Like, go for it. So, like me, I, I, that's so respectable that, you know, it ain't about the the fifteen minute fame. Like, no, no, no. Mm -hmm. Like, like either my work gets me there, but I'm not gonna like lower yourself into yeah. something like that. And I, and, and I think that's amazing. I'm glad you do that, and I'm glad you're showing other young women out there mm -hmm. that there's ways. Like, I have talent. Yeah. Like, my body is not just the talent, right? My beauty mm -hmm. is not just the talent. Like, I have real talent. I'm more talent. than that. Yeah. I have creativity. I'm an artist. Like, 
this is what I bring, right? So like, kudos to you. I think that's thank fucking you, so you. badass. <laughs> I, I, I'll toast you to that one because I, I, I'm telling you that's that's a big thing right now. You know. Mm-hmm. Yes, it is. So that I mean, <clears throat> you know, I can imagine the proud moments your mom has dude like i mean she's gotta be proud every time i show her a rock she's like wow and i'm like right she she is your biggest fan right (laughs) she is she is she even she created her own like so she has two phones because one like she couldn't return or whatever and that phone she uses um another tiktok account that's actually says like rock painting and she posts my videos on there to see if like they'll get even more like views or like more people to reach out or whatever so yeah, she's my biggest fan. Oh yeah, it's, it's like my mom, right? Like, mijo, do the podcast. You know, like, <laughs> you know, like, and it's so cool. Like I, in in my way, like, like I've started this thing, and like I absolutely love it. You mm-hmm. know, like it's so cool because I know you, but how many conversations we're we gonna have like this? Yeah, like, like it's hard, right? Like it's always like, ah, oh, how are you? Como estás? You know, da, 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 da. yeah. I feel oh, like yeah. the last memory that I have of you is like whenever you would come to our house when I was younger and I would be in trouble in the corner and you would, like, get me out of there. <laughs> That's the last thing I can remember. <laughs> like, you would just, like, come out with me in your arms and I was just going to be like, like, she was there for a reason. Why did you get her out? <laughs> and you're like, know. ay, pobrecita. <laughs> but that's, that's cool, you know? Like, I have I was talking to your brother, uh, Michael, the other day. Mm-hmm. And he said a similar story like that. Like, dude, like, I remember, like, there was some, like, my, like, other, I guess, like, Mario and, like, mm-hmm. other, like, my, probably, like, Roque and other people were, like, like being a dick to him, right? You know? Mm-hmm. Like, and this is, like, a Wello's house, I think he was saying. And he's, like, dude, like, you pretty much told him, like, no, man, like, fuck that. Like, and that's, like, that's when I knew, like, you were cool. I was, like, really? Like, and, like, I don't remember all these things, right? Yeah. I'm just being me. Like, I, you know, like, I like to be neutral. Like, uh, mm-hmm. man, like. My biggest thing in this world is like, I don't I don't like being mean to people. Like, mm-hmm. like I don't like having enemies because once I have an enemy, like it's yeah. over, dude. Like, like I don't like it, you know. And, yeah. And like, especially with family, like, uh, man, I, I just can't do it. Like, I can't hate. I don't hate nobody, right? Like, mm-hmm. I'm, I, it's just not in me, right? You know. So that's cool. You got that memory. Like, yeah. I don't. That's 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 pretty cool, man. Like, um, what? So love life is. Non-existent. Are you open to? Are, <laughs> well, I mean, in a way, right? Like, but that's not a bad thing, and that's yeah. not necessarily like bad. Like, I think that's cool. But like, yeah, like I know there's a lot of people that are like, oh my god, you've never had a boyfriend before, or like, oh my god, this and that and this and that. And I'm like, I mean, it's not a bad thing. Right. It's not a necessity. Right. It's right, like right. more of a I want to have, or anything like that. Like, it's not a primary thing that I think of every single freaking day. Right. right. Like you know. Right, no, I mean, sure. in col- I am in college, and I do look around, I'm like, oh, okay. Right, right, right. It's <laughs> potential, natural, potential. Right? Um, <laughs> I'll tell you this, like, exactly how you said earlier, like, don't rush that. Like, that's yeah. that's going to come on its own, but I think you're on your path. What are you going to college for? I'm going to college to get my BFA. What is that? It's Bachelor's in Fine Arts, so oh. I'm getting my Bachelor's in Dance. Oh, okay, yeah. cool, cool, cool. So, okay, Melanie, in five years, where are you? Hopefully, a background dancer. Cool. For somebody famous. Yeah. What if? What if you're the fucking famous? One? What if? What if I am the famous <laughs> right. one? You never Dancing know, right? and being the. You, I mean. Yeah. For all we know, J Lo could be watching this podcast for real. right now. For, let me do some dances for you, J Lo. Right? <laughs> J Lo, I'll interview you too. You know? <laughs> yeah, no, that either that or like. Um, in like a Broadway musical, yeah, like yeah. dancing. Um, and those are my goals. Speaking of that, like, as weird as it may sound, like I I love watching plays, mm-hmm. and I think that requires dancing too, right? Like, yeah. And it's almost. I, I mean, I look at it as like someone's acting when they do that. Like, I love going to those plays. Mm-hmm. Like, uh, I went with a good friend a couple years ago. She was in college at the time, and I'm talking a couple years ago. Um, it was like one of the best memories I've had just being in the audience, like mm. seeing the curtain and like, it was bad. Like it was badass. Like, yeah. I really enjoyed that. Um, okay. So you, you're doing that. Um, is there a backup plan to that? No. <laughs> good, good, good. And <laughs> no, there's I, I, not. I know a lot of people say, 
don't put all your eggs in one basket. Let me tell you something, man. Put them all. Yeah, put like I, all. I, I you tried. You go for it. Shoot it. I go tried to it. do other things because ever since I was a kid, I wanted to be a dancer. And then I was always told, like, uh, that's not a career. That's more of a hobby. And you're like, uh, like you won't get paid enough right. to, like, you know, actually live your best life. So I was like, okay, let me be a veterinarian because I loved animals. And then I was, I found out that you have to put those animals down sometimes. And right. I was like, nope, <laughs> not for me. And then I was like, let me be a nurse. So then I uh, did CNA in high school, which is like the where you take care of like old people. And we did the clinics and everything. And I was just like, mm, no, I'm good. <laughs> I was like, I'm good. And then I did EMT. And I actually liked being an EMT. Like, it was actually, I liked the rush, okay. I guess you can say. I liked I the rush. I had no idea. Yeah, I was. Yeah. Uh, I did the oh, EMT yeah, in high school. And then I did EMT, the advanced, like, advanced EMT mm -hmm, in mm -hmm. college. But since I didn't pass, like, the basic test, like, I couldn't continue. So I really wanted to do that. And then I had a year off of college because I owed money for financial aid for the fact that I had to get out of those classes. And I didn't have a job. So I got a job and I still didn't get to pay or anything like that. So I was off for like a year. And I kept thinking like, OK, am I going to go back? Like it's, it was in that point where it's like, is that really what I want? And I mean, Miguel actually came to talk to me and he was like, knowing you you're not gonna make it not like in a bad way right right he was just like you see a lot of stuff and knowing you like you're very emotional mm -hmm. and he's like and that's gonna haunt you and i was like hmm, you're right yeah and so it was because of that and because like i have um i had like back problems in the moment so i was like if i were in a situation where like for example like a 200 pound male needs to be like rushed to the hospital because you know he's almost dying or whatever and you have to like lift him up off of the the gurney or whatever yeah yeah i'm not gonna think oh let me put my legs the way they should be let me lift with my legs now i'm gonna lift and go and i'm gonna hurt myself and i have a better bigger chance of hurting myself than probably anybody there so i was like okay that's the second thing so already two things and then me kind of being like eh so I was like, no, I'm not going to go back for that. So you went for your real dream. So I actually went, I was going to go back to do the general studies. And the person I was talking to was like, well, what do you like to do? And I was like, well, I like painting. I like dance and I like photography. And then so she's like, OK. And then when I went to go look to see, like to get my classes, it saw that I was associate to fine arts. And I was like, oh. OK, <laughs> so then I just continued with that, yeah. took dance. And then I just continued from there. I, th I think. So I was like, I think you're doing the right thing. Yeah. Like, and if it doesn't work out, make it work out. Exactly. Right. Like, never give up. Yeah. Like, people, you're only crazy to those that maybe don't believe you can, right? Mm -hmm. But you know you can, right? So like, that's the difference, right? Like, yeah. crazy as it may be, like, screw it. Like, I'm, I'm doing it. And I think, I think you're on your course, dude. Like, I, yeah. I, it's what you want to do. Like, when I was 18, like. I want to be a, a Marine. Like, that's, mm -hmm. that's what I wanted to do, right? Like, I'm like, I got to go do this. Like, and I would think, like, man, what if I go and, like, I don't make it? Mm -hmm. What if I fail out of boot camp, you know? Like, mm -hmm. and then I got to come home, like, a failure and, like, like man. Your tail like, between your legs. Right, right. And then I was like, man, <laughs> like, maybe, like, maybe I shouldn't go, right? Because, like, what mm -hmm. if I don't? What are people going to say or people going to think? And then I was like, no, no, like, this is what you want to do. Like, put it all in and, and I put everything I had into it. Then my ears got out, you know, like, I may have done some more, but I think the tempo was just too much for me. Yeah. And and I got out, and that's cool. You know, like, it was a good experience for me. You know, that opened so many doors, even to this day. Like, doors open just because I did that, mm -hmm. which I think is cool, you know? Like, so. Yeah, and that's a part of, like, the dance community. Right. You get connections. It's a community, right? Yeah. Everything you choose. And I love it. Uh, you stay yeah. in it, and you figure it out. And, hey, it should work out, right? Like, yeah. And if it doesn't, exactly. You know, who like cares, we, you know? we get uh, people like in the master classes who come and who've been like in shows, who've been in like um, a music video or like something like that. And actually, somebody at my job, which I honestly find really freaking cool, but we teach like older, like older people, so like dancing. And um, their nephew 
is actually a background dancer to Janet Jackson right now. And I was just like, oh. You know, I dated. Okay, so I dated, there's a connection. <laughs> I, I dated Janet Jackson for a bit. Really? Yeah. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I can definitely see that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I might be lying, right? But, like, <laughs> I mean, but uh, so you like, never know. <laughs> in these dances, like, so is it like pop, hip hop, or are you also getting into like the other type, like salsa, merengue, bachata, like, or how does that Yeah. Uh, my job it's ballroom so we teach everything like a uh, partner like so we elegant. teach mm-hmm, so we teach like waltz salsa bachata gotcha. merengue gotcha. rumba like we teach all of that so Where's, well okay like so how did they like i would like to learn right so like mm-hmm. how does one go about getting to these places like what's the process i mean uh they have a website so it's called dance vision and they have a website and you can like see what they have to offer and it gives you like a the little where you like scroll the way down and you put like your email and your phone number and why you're interested and whatever and we receive it in an email and we print it out and we give you a call we're like why do you want to do dancing and we like get to know you and we schedule your appointment and then you come in cool. so they do like the introductory program that's what it's called and it's like two private lessons because we run with private lessons like it's not just like a you come in kind of thing uh, we do private lessons, and it's two of them for fifty dollars. Oh wow, which no. isn't bad. No, no, it's good. And then if you want to continue, they'll like do the program with you. Like, I feel like this would be good for you, and then they'll give you like a price and all of that stuff, and then you can continue. And the program, like, uh, you're able to come to the group classes because we do have group classes and parties, so like you get to come to that. So, so it, it's actually really, really fun. So what's more passionate to you, dancing or painting? Oof. I feel like I feel like maybe dancing is right, like, <laughs> or is dancing a first love, and then you love painting as well. Like I don't know. Like I, I'll, I feel yeah. like dancing is my first love, and painting is my second, but they're both my passions. If that makes sense. Oh yeah, for sure. Because like I've always loved dancing, and as a kid, I could not draw. I could not draw. God. For the life of me. I can't believe that. I could not draw. I <clears throat> The horses that I would do were literally like the circle, circle, stick, stick, stick. <laughs> like, and I could not draw. I and, would never have put you like that. <laughs> yeah, and the people in my class, because like I would take art class, because I think it was like a, you had to, like in elementary and then uh-huh, uh-huh. junior high. And so like I would take those classes and people would like literally, like I would look at it, it it's in elementary, like Mind you, elementary. Right. They would literally draw something so realistic, and I'd just be like, "How? <laughs> like how?" And so, uh, in junior high, when I had to take an art class, like we always had to do like uh, assignments mm-hmm, to mm-hmm. turn in like every day, and it would just be like draw something, and they'll give us like a prompt or whatever. I would literally trace it. I would trace absolutely everything, and I'd be like, "Yeah, I did it." Like whatever. And my mom would like look at me and be like. I don't believe you. And I'm like, I swear I'm doing it. Like I traced, I did not trace it. Like I did it myself. And she was like, um, she was like, okay. She grabbed like a, I think it was like a DS game or I don't know what kind of game, but it was a Mario game. She flipped it over and she's like, I want you to draw him right here in front of me. And it was the yellow turtle from Mario. Gotcha. 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 And I was like, I'm on the spot. <laughs> and I was like, dang it. I, I'm on the spot. <laughs> I was like, uh, do I come clean or do I try to do I try to do it myself? And I was like, you know what? I'm going to do it myself. I so I sat this. there and like I started drawing it. And I kid you not, I drew it to perfection. Wow. Like it was literally like a copy of that. And I was like, I was looking at it and I looked at my mom and said, like, I told you. <laughs> like I wasn't kidding. So you figured it out just like that. Mm-hmm. So. And like. What was it like just being on the spot? I don't think it was being on the spot. And I learned um, actually like continuing like art is tracing is a form of practice. Oh, Like oh. you think tracing is like, oh, you're cheating. No, it's actually a form of practice because gotcha. you you are teaching yourself in your mind as well as your hand. Like this is a circle. This is how you can do this. This is how you can do that. So like you're teaching yourself like, OK, this is what this is supposed to look like by visualizing it. This is how I can do it with my hand. And I was like, oh, dang, tracing helped me. Right. And yeah. it helped me a lot. So how long were you tracing before you went for real? Probably 
that whole year of junior high. I don't remember what grade wow. I was. I think it was eighth grade. So that's a good deal, like because, I mean, maybe like some some young person out there's we're not young, just somebody that mm-hmm. wants to do this. And they don't know how to start. Yeah, and I get a lot of people commenting on my videos like, how do you do it? Or like, I can never do something like that. And it's like, you actually can. You just have to put yourself to actually do it. Like you, obviously, like if I sit here, I'm like, I can't do that dance move. I'm yeah, not going to do it. Can't, exactly. It's and on until the I get up and actually try it, like that's not going to happen. Is, is, is there a difference between, oh, sorry. like, for example, I show you a drawing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can do that. Mm-hmm. Cause like I think now, what if you have nothing to look at? How does that work? That for me is actually hard, cause like I have, and, and, you, and you know this, I have an imagination, right, 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 <laughs> and I can think of something like so cool. I'm like, oh my gosh, imagine if this was this, and like this is falling here and there's like this background and like this right here and like this animal or whatever. If I try to draw that, it's not going to come out like that. Well, and like, that's why they say, um, when you come into art, don't expect anything. Like, especially if you have anything, something in your head, that is actually a like barrier. Mm -hmm. If that makes sense. Like that stops you from actually creating something. Right. And, and, and now with the project that me and you may have here soon, we're gonna put, a wink, wink. right. <laughs> we're gonna put that one into test, right? Into test, and I think, I think it will help you. Like it's gonna be a challenge that yeah. I'm more than happy to take on, right? Because that's something I've always wanted to. I want. I've always wanted to be able to like be able to put what I have in mind onto paper, right. but I'd never. One, I don't think I've ever really tried purpose like i never actually like oh let me actually sit down and try to do this like i've never done that i'm doing basically that like oh i wish i could do that and i'm not actually doing it so that's gonna be Uh, it's gonna be a a good challenge challenge. i think my part of the project i want to have it done for april like i'm pushing towards that like a lot of it has been going on in my mind Mm mm-hmm and I know it sounds crazy, but like I know you understand it. Um, for those that don't understand that part, like well, how can he be working on it in his mind? But mm-hmm. a lot of work has happened in my mind already for this project that we're gonna do. Yeah. And I'm finally putting some things on paper. Um, and then like I've showed you earlier, right? Like, and I think I hope to have it complete by like April. Mm-hmm. And then I pass off my work to you. Mm-hmm. And. If, if, well, however long you need it, there's no rush on it. But I think once we get that together, I think it'll be so awesome because mm-hmm. like, it's got so much meaning for me, and I think it's gonna have so much meaning for yeah. you. Like we're both going to start breaking our own like different barriers that we yeah. haven't touched yet, and I think that's cool. Like to like I'm so excited about I'm that. I'm excited. Like, like, I'm really excited. Like ah, uh, that's gonna be so good. Like like and like I told you, you know like putting this together with anybody else that could do the artwork like it doesn't mean anything to me right mm-hmm. like, like it's just some somebody drawing art for me but this changes it right because like i know the passion that you'll have will be the same passion mm-hmm. that i put in to get you like my rough draft to you yeah right? and i think your artwork will make this project pop like so I'm looking forward to it. I'm like, looking forward to it too. Um, Sorry, mom, I can't tell you. <laughs> <laughs> so, did you watch your brother's podcast? I did, yes. Yeah? Which is crazy because, and I was actually going to tell you this, but I was like, let me just save it. But um, before I watched it, and I know he brought up sleep paralysis. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Before I watched it, I actually had sleep paralysis. Yeah, oh you suffer from that too. Yeah, it's it sucks. Um, I w- I woke up. And, like, you know, I started watching videos. I ate. I did everything. And I was like, let me put 30 minutes of watching more videos. And then I'll start, like, the painting. And so I did that. And I was so warm. And I started coloring up to the point where I, like, took a nap. And my, I feel like my sleep paralysis is different from, like, Miguel's. Because um, he sees shadow people. I actually, mine's, like, a dream. Okay. Almost. Um, And this one was, like. Is it a dream you know you're dreaming? It's a dream that I know that I'm dreaming. Okay. Um, because I feel like the whole I can't move 
and like um obviously like i can't talk or anything like that and i can literally feel like my mouth just like being shut like i can't move it and um it felt like what i saw was like me being and it was like literally it was me it wasn't like me standing there watching it happen it was like actually me and it was like me getting dragged off of my bed so you're a third person watching it no i'm the person that's oh, happening okay, yeah okay, okay, i okay. am the person that's happening Wow. in the dream so like it was me getting dragged off of the I bed <laughs> it was me getting dragged off like i could literally see like my feet like move from the bed and like coming off of the oh, bed God. <laughs> i sleep here alone dude <laughs> and then um i didn't see it happen but i felt it where like my arms were like starting to like cross oh, wow. and like i was like i need to get up and like um one way that my mom told me, because I would I was, always tell her that I'm uh, when I have one, she's like, just pray. And so, like, I started praying, and then, uh, and then like, I could feel myself in the dream forcing my eyes to be open. Uh -uh. So my eyes were open, but I was still asleep. And then, like, like I was telling myself, like, you got to wake up. You got to wake up. Like, Diosito está contigo. Like, everything's okay. And then I woke up, and, like, my head was hurting, and I was, like, lightheaded. But, like, in that dream... Which is so weird because um, I was getting dragged. I felt that. But then it comes to the point where I was on the bed again trying to get up. Like, I had open my eyes and everything. And, like, I was getting up and I was, like, feeling really dizzy, still feeling like that I can't move part. And then that's when, like, I woke up. And I was just like, what? And I could hear, like, a, vo a woman's voice, like, talking. But I can't. I don't remember what she said. English or Spanish? I feel like it was English with an accent. Which is weird. Right. So, like, it almost felt like um, in the movies and everything where, like, you get kidnapped. Okay. Like, it almost felt like that scenario. And I was just like, oof. So. And I just didn't take a nap. I just started drawing. <laughs> I was like, nah. Do you, do you, okay, like, I'm I'm a believer in, like, like, in the real world out here. Not gonna mess with me, right? Like, mm -hmm. but when you lay that head down, like, in that dream world, I'm vulnerable. Yeah. Like, I'm no longer in control, right? Like, yeah. so, like. I, think, I have very vivid dreams. Right. <laughs> like, I have very vivid so dreams. So have you had, so I started getting over the sleep paralysis, like, and, and I had one not too long ago, but they're not as often as they used to be. Yes. And uh, I think uh, ayahuasca, you know, like that helped me, right? Like mm -hmm. my whole psychedelic journey helped me get like, so I would have these things, these nightmares, and then I would face them. Mm -hmm. And I think that's what changed everything about me, right? Like, so ayahuasca what it did for me was it helped me face the fears and a lot of my fears are not in the real world like they're mm -hmm. in the spiritual world the dream world the like that world it's not here i'm good right like i got shotguns you know okay we can we can take care yeah. of that but it's in the in the mind the spirit world where like i wasn't strong right so yeah and when i started getting stronger in that world like that sleep paralysis started fading off so maybe like for me it was the praying yeah. I feel like the praying and knowing that God was there with me and nothing was going to happen was like there, the sleep paralysis was like, well, yeah. dang, I can't grab her now. Right. right. <laughs> yeah. There's, there's power in prayer. There's power in, uh, in believing in God, yeah. like, like people and knowing that it's not real. Well, you know, like, and that's where we're going to have a, like an issue here because <laughs> that's real. Like, no, like it's real, it's but real like and, knowing, and, knowing that, you're not actually physically there. Right. Like, you know what I mean? That's right. what I mean by it not being real. Right. So like, like you can take control of it. Basically how you, right, said. right. You can. Yeah. When you realize you can. Mm -hmm. And, but that's why the mind is so powerful. Right. Like, like, like I believe that world is just as real as this one. Yeah, it is because <laughs> whenever you feel like you're falling or walking down the ladder and you like jumping, uh, yeah. <laughs> you wake up like, ah! <laughs> I've done that many a time. I've done that too. We're like, oh, yeah. shit. <laughs> no, you yeah. jump and you wake up like, oh. <laughs> yeah, it's, a, it's the one where you're falling or. The they actually said, and this is crazy. I don't know if this is true, but they say that um, if you have that where you like feel like you're falling and then you like jump in your sleep that's actually like your spirit going up and then coming back down and i'm like that's have you ever had a dream crazy. where I, I, it's called astral projection where you come out of your body mm -hmm. you start like you're laying down 
and then you start seeing yourself like, oh, that's me. Like, and then, I have not had that. At least not that I remember. Right. So I think sleep paralysis is kind of like, it, it's like, it's almost like to me, in, in my opinion, it's mm-hmm. like the beginning of you trying to get out of your body. Mm-hmm. And what takes over is the fear. So it becomes sleep paralysis. We're like, <gasps> like don't. Right. Yeah. Right. And then I felt like sometimes like as a kid, it would happen to me a lot where I could get out and I'm like, Oh my God. Like, and I could see myself sleeping. And I'm like, and I take off and go do stuff like, and then as I got older, like one that I remember vividly is like, I see myself down and I'm like, boom, I'm out. I'm like, Oh shit. Like, all right, cool. And I start flying. I, like as stupid as it may sound, <laughs> like I flew the Grand Canyon. Like of all places I could have went to, yeah, that's where I went, and that's where I wanted to go in that dream. I'm like, nope, I want to fly. I want to, yeah. Like, if I can fly, I want to fly through the Grand Canyon. And like ah, that's what I did in that dream, and it felt so real, man. Like that's crazy. And that no, came I haven't back. had. I haven't had those uh, sleep paralysis dreams. Yeah. I've only had or astral projections. Yeah, I've yeah, only yeah. had the one that like scared me so much was. It might have been the first one I ever had, and I can remember to this day. It was when I was still living at the house that Miguel's living at right now. Um, I I was sleeping in my mom's room. I had a little corner. That was my bed. That was my room. was a little corner. And I will remember that, like, um, I felt that whole, like, I can't move. I can't talk. But I can hear myself yelling, like, Mom, Ama, like, I can't move. Like, help me. Like, I can hear myself yelling that. And... I think I saw, like, that what everybody sees, that, like, sleep paralysis demon or whatever, Uh uh like, starting to, like, loom over me. And then, like, I can feel, like, my teeth, like, even in my sleep, like, grinding because, like, I'm trying so hard to wake up and I just cannot. And when I did, I woke up and I could not go back to sleep. I was like, "Uh uh-uh. I was like, "Uh -uh." (laughs) uh-uh. I was like, I'm not, I'm not sleeping. It's so hard. It's so annoying, right? Like It is. When... You, I went through that. I went through like a little time phase. Like I didn't want to go to Mm-mm. sleep. It's very scary because I knew like I was gonna dream and have nightmares. Like, and that was bad. Like, yeah. And then like I'm telling you, I did the psychedelics. I started off with mushrooms, and from mushrooms I took off to do ayahuasca. Mm-hmm. And I feel like I cleanse my body, my soul, my spirit, my heart, everything. And I broke a lot of bad habits mm-hmm. that were just embedded in my mind and then i became a new person yeah and yeah no i think the only nightmares i had were like the slender man was like following me or like right but, 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 <laughs> or like the, but those things go so much deeper yeah right? because it's maybe it's your way of expressing fear over mm-hmm. something right so like i believe dreams like they go deep yeah no dude. they like, do i um and that's one thing that you and Miguel talked about the whole like going into like rabbit holes like, I would go into rabbit holes and be like, what does this mean? Right. Like, I I can remember a lot of my dreams, which is crazy. And I know that um, they say that the dreams you remember are like, again, some that your dreams are trying to tell you something. So I, I can remember a lot of my dreams. Like, uh, the Slender Man one, like, he was standing there. I was running. And then, like, I look at the ground and it's like his big silhouette. And then, like, I wake up. Or, like, um, there was one that... I think I was sleeping actually in Mexico. I don't remember what part of Mexico, but I was sleeping in Mexico. At and house? No, no, not at Willow's house. It was somebody that place else. That fucking scary to me. <laughs> really? <laughs> I love that place. But I. But not to sleep in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> as a grown up now, though, as a kid, like I loved sleeping there. It felt like yeah. my second home. Um, but another one I had was like, it was like this long hallway with a whole bunch of like mirrors and each mirror had a car and each car had like a scary movie character. So like one car had Chucky, one car had Ghostface, one car had like, uh, Freddy Krueger, like blah, blah, blah. And then, um, the grudge and all of that stuff. And like, I was just walking and watching them while they're watching me walking. And that was all the whole dream. And then another one, this, this dream was like in the phase where I was still like, you would still pee in bed or whatever. <laughs> so don't judge me. <laughs> but I was in the bathroom and um, the door was open and the grudge like came in doing this or whatever. And then she was gone. And then the next people that came in were the three um, shock, lock, shock and barrel from Nightmare Before Christmas. Um, and they were for my time or or way after my time. Probably. No, it was 
I think it was your turn. I don't remember. <laughs> but Nightmare Before Christmas, you haven't Jack Skellington is not okay. Well, anyways, <laughs> <laughs> they were it, there's uh, this scene that they're into where they um, they're traveling in a tub, like that's their travel transportation or whatever. And so they came in front of the door with that, and then they come in and they put a bag over me, and I wake up and my bed is peed. But <laughs> blame but like, it on them. Fuck <laughs> I know. Screw y'all. <laughs> it wasn't me, mama. It wasn't like, me. It's fucking drunk. <laughs> <laughs> I was getting taken. <laughs> like that motherfucker came. You know? <laughs> and it was the smallest one too. The I guess the least scary one. So I mean, I don't know. But like I there's a lot of dreams that I can remember, which is crazy. Like it could be like me in school and like almost and I have a lot of which is crazy, I have a lot of uh deja vu's. Oh. So I'm like, oh So Am I a psychic? What do you know? <laughs> what do you think deja vu is? I feel like it's a premonition that you had, like, in your dream. So you think it comes from the dream? I feel like it comes in the dreams, but I don't know. But why? Why do you think that way? I don't know. Because... I haven't actually gone down that rabbit hole, which I actually should. But... So here's my take on uh-huh. deja vu. Uh, as crazy as it sounds, right? So deja vu, most people think, oh, I had a dream already. Mm-hmm. I don't think... Or I've lived this before. Right? I don't think so. What I think Second is... Dimension. Yes. Ah. <laughs> so what I another think, world. <laughs> it's the higher dimension you mm. telling yourself, "Hey, watch this is this. gonna happen. Like this is important. Pay attention." And you're like, <gasps> right? Mm. Like you always like you're in your mind like oh, I just I like I've already been here. Mm-hmm. I've already lived this. But I think it's the higher dimension you telling you like, all right, stay like pay attention, dude. Like something important happened to you. Or I also think it's like, hey, you're on your path. Like this is like a reassurance. That you're going the way you need to go. So mm-hmm. I, that's what I think deja vu is. Now, could it come from a dream? Maybe, right? But I think it's a yeah, higher no. dimension you, right? Like, I think that's sending yourself a message. Because in those dimensions... It's a glitch in the matrix. Not so much, <laughs> right? <just> because, <laughs> in, in my opinion, like, I'm not sure how religious you are. like, And we'll touch that, right? Like, Oh, uh, yeah. And we're not going to fight, obviously. Yeah, about, no. Okay, cool, so... Like, I'm not sure you got a knife. No, on no, no. <laughs> I mean, I do. I do have a knife with my my keys, and my mom makes fun of me because it's supposed to be a protection okay. knife. No, no. From <laughs> here on out, you get a gun. Okay. Like, <laughs> and if you have any issues with that, like, if nobody wants to teach you. I teach you. I'll okay. teach you everything I know. But I think everyone in Texas should have a pistol on them mm-hmm. if you're of age for your protection. Right. Like, get one. Train up on it. Be responsible. Anyways, we'll go. That's a whole different thing. But, <laughs> so where was I? Deja vu. Okay. Third dimension. Right. Mm-hmm. So like the dimension world. Uh, where was like, man, I had a good point on it. Uh, so like. Bring it back. Bring it back. Bring it back. Right. right. <laughs> We're going to cut this part. <laughs> and cut. <laughs> so like. There's a world, right? Like religion. And then I feel there's a spiritual world. And in my opinion, like, like I think a lot of the Bible is really telling us a spiritual story, right? Mm. Where And you talked about this with me, though. Right. Yeah. So, like, as it is above, as it is below, right? Oh, that movie was scary. <laughs> <laughs> but I, I think that what that scary. means is, like, like, we're in this world. Mm-hmm. And I think everybody wants to go... Everybody thinks heaven is, like, that way. And entities and, like... I think it's within, mm-hmm. right? So, like, if you're going to meet Jesus and Christ and, and that... It's not... I'm not going to heaven. I'm going to heaven. Like, it's inside mm-hmm. of you. Like, as it is on the outside, as it is in the inside. So, mm-hmm. like... Like, there's ups, there's downs, right? So, like, this is a world we live in. This is what we're seeing. There's a world inside of us. Mm -hmm. And you can reach it through meditation. You can reach it through maybe, like, psychedelic drugs. But there is a world. And I sound crazy. I get it. But, like, (laughs) and you're like, where is he going with this, right? But so, (laughs) like, I think there's, like, a deeper world where those dimensions and that's where I was saying, like, deja vu. Mm-hmm. It's like the higher dimension you. Like, it's everything's within. Like, I think people are always trying to look outward towards, like, oh, Jesus, and or Santitos, right? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, this and this and that. And, like, it's always this way. Really, it's everything is within, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, 
I guess that's my point, right? Like, so, yeah. like, spirituality, it's getting to know yourself. Yeah. And the more you know yourself, the more comfortable you are with yourself. Like, you start tapping into those powers, right? So, mm-hmm. like, your talent, your art, mm-hmm. doesn't come from out here, dude. Mm-hmm. It comes from within. So, I think the biggest thing that we could do is start is looking within. And listening. And listening to ourselves, right? Like, go deep in you right yeah. like in your thoughts and i feel like that's true because then you have like the gut feeling of stuff or whatever um right. so yeah i, I believe mean, that like the inside of you is more powerful right yeah like so that's kind of like a because like when i wasn't doing like dance or anything like that i wasn't happy right. yeah so then i started doing dance and i felt more like who and then when i got out of happy lobby i was even more happy because it was that job some jobs you hate. <laughs> and like it wasn't even the job itself that was horrible. Like the job was easy. It was good pay. It was like eighteen dollars an hour. Um, it was good pay. Everybody there, we were all friends. We were all help each other when we needed it. Like it was a teamwork versus like I'm doing this, you're doing that. Like that was our tasks. No, like if I were to finish mine, I would go and help somebody else. Like it would be that kind of teamwork. The and even then, like the customers weren't even that bad. Like they were easy to handle even though they were so annoying sometimes <laughs> <laughs> but um it was mainly management like management was the toxic part of that job and they still are to this day like a lot of my coworkers want to leave and i can see like now like when i go visit or whatever i can see a lot of them just being like so stressed out or like just not in the mood or but and i know that they're more happy than they are there like you know what i mean right. So once I left, I felt like this, like a, like a right. sigh. But what a valuable so lesson crazy. to have learned. Mm-hmm. Like a manager can really break or make yes. the team, right? So because there's a difference between a manage, a boss and a leader. Right. So yeah, exactly. Yeah. What I used to say there's a difference between a supervisor and a leader. Mm-hmm. Anyone can be a supervisor, but not no, everyone, everyone can, can be, be a leader. No, that man cannot be a leader. Right. And he was in the military. Yeah. You know what? We're gonna give him a shout out. F you, whoever you are. <laughs> Right, his but, name. What this <laughs> he lives it. <laughs> this is his address. Yeah, right. This is his Facebook. <laughs> See, no. it's because even in the military, like a lot of people think this idea that oh, he was in the military. The military has some of the worst leaders I've ever seen, but it has some of the greatest ones I've ever mm-hmm. seen. It's like anywhere else. Yeah, it's and I'm grateful now where I'm at. Like, yes, I did start in the beginning, not like not even getting half of what I got paid. So I was like way behind on bills and on everything. And it was stressful, yes, but I wasn't – it was a stressful moment, but I wasn't so stressed to the point where I was not happy, if that makes sense. Right, yeah. Like, I, I would always tell myself, like, it's going to get better. Like, once I get students or once I get, like, uh, literally full-time hours, like, it's going to get better. And sure enough, it has gone better. And my manager, every time he, like, says something, like, he's like – uh, if I'm like I'm in pain he's like are you okay do you need this or whatever or like if I ask him like hey like this day I can't come in is that okay and he's like yeah that's fine I'm like what <laughs> like, you're not used to that like I'm not I'm not used to it I'm used to like them being like we'll figure it out find somebody else to get your schedule or like oh we can't because it's a busy day or like something like that or like um, them getting fussy because I want a day off and I've like worked so hard and been like, if y'all need me to stay, I'll stay. If y'all need this, I'll do this. I'll do all of this stuff and like finish before we leave. And like, I'll literally be such a hard worker just to get nothing. Like, you know what I mean? Right. Like they expect so much, but they don't give you Anything. what you need. Right. And it, it was to the point. Let it out, girl. How do you really <laughs> feel? <laughs> it was, it, it, he was so bad to the point, like um, recently, uh, since like, I think the second year that I was there, um, I kept feeling like my legs were falling asleep, my arms were falling asleep, my head was falling asleep. Um, like it was just all these like random tingles, and I didn't know what it was. And so like when I went to go check it, they couldn't figure it out. They were like, "Oh, you just need to like work out, or like you need to do this." Like they they did like the brain scan, they did like all of this other stuff, and they couldn't find anything. So I was like, "What is going on?" Like they did the they. <laughs> One thing they did was, like, the muscle and nerves thing, and they put, like, this acupuncture thing in your arm and your legs, and they, like, move it around. Ooh, that thing hurts so bad. 
Um, but none of that was wrong. Um, they did blood tests. None of it was wrong. Um, I did come up positive on some things, but they say that I just have the antibodies. Like, I don't actually have, like, the actual disease or anything. And, like, they just could not figure it out. And then they were like, oh, you have um, arthritis on your neck. Because, like, they guess they saw something and I was like, okay. Like, all right. So then I would tell my boss and be like, this is the... I can't lift or anything. This is what my doctor gave me. And then when that expired, he come up to me and he's like, hey, we need another one. And I'm like, oh, well, I don't have it. Uh, like, I don't have another one. And he's like, well, if you don't give me another one, I'm going to have to make you lift. And I was just like, I mean, the arthritis is still there. And he's like, well, everybody lives with back pain. And I was just like. That's time to go. I'm like, OK, yeah. <laughs> like that's not one that's not OK to say to somebody at all. And then I was like, whatever. And the whole day, like, I was just so mad. And I talked to him and I was just like, you didn't really need to tell me that and belittle me. And he's like, I never did that. And I was like, yeah, you did. <laughs> you belittled me. You belittled what I'm going through. And I was like, and that's not okay. Right. And then, and I hate feeling like kind of happy that this happened, but there was one day where he was feeling pain on his neck. I know and it turns out that he had I don't I don't remember because this was like I heard somebody told me because they heard somebody like I don't know how exactly true this is but if it was then I mean honestly <laughs> you know you deserved it <laughs> right but I'm uh, there with you dude like, like I don't wish it upon anybody but like but if you're going through it <laughs> get it. if you're going through it and you don't care that somebody else is going through it and you tell them that to their face especially when that's an employee of yours that is helping you out. Right. That's, like, no. That's, that's karma. That's all that was. But it turns yeah. out that I guess he did have uh, what I had to, like the arthritis. But even then, that I, I actually didn't end up having that. I ended up having, like, a hernia on my neck. Oh, okay. And my back. Cool. Like, lower back and my so neck. So that's something you can get fixed and move on, right? Like Yes. Yeah. So. What's, um? I would imagine the job you're in now, now you're dancing, you're mm -hmm. teaching dancing, like, okay, I, I don't see you stressed. You don't look stressed no, to me at all. You know, like and that's not. so cool, dude. Like, it's so good to see people. Like, yeah. Like, I hate to see people go to work and they hate work. Mm -hmm. Like, that sucks. Like, yeah. I'm in a good place too. Like, my job now. Like, man, I have it made. Like, mm -hmm. good boss. Like, I you know sometimes I work with my brother or like some of the other guys and it's mm -hmm. like, I have a blast at work. Yeah. Right? So like, there's no stress. Like. I can say whatever whatever I want on this podcast, and like if anybody reports me to my boss, he's gonna laugh and be like, be like "Okay, and yeah, I don't care." Like that's so like it gives me so much freedom because that was one of the things that I told told my boss. Rather, like, man, like you know, I don't want to like. He's like, I don't care what you do. Yeah. Like on your off time, I don't care what you do. Like as long as you're not a serial killer, like we're good, dude. Yeah. He's like, and if you are, like, don't kill me. <laughs> like, don't, don't kill <laughs> <Nice>. me. <laughs> like, not me, not me. Guys. But it gives me so much freedom because at this point, like, I, I wouldn't give up the podcast. Like, mm -hmm. like, I love it. Um, and I don't, like, this doesn't have to generate me money. Like, you know, I do it because, like, yeah. everybody I get on is, like, close friends, family, or people that I admire, right? Like, maybe, but. Mostly it's just been everybody like us, right? Like, mm -hmm. it, and it's so cool, like, because it's like, pinch of cheese, man, right? Like, yeah, it's, it's all it is, like, like literal tea, <laughs> right, like, right, right? That's right, what right. you need to have, right. not not alcohol. You need to have tea. But it's that's so what you're cool. Like, <laughs> one of my favorite episodes has been with my mom and mm -hmm. my dad. Like, those were so cool, right? Like, who gets a chance to like podcast with your mom and your dad? I yeah. think that was pretty cool. And, like, even though you've been with them their whole life, like, you don't actually know a lot about them. Right, you really right. think about it. And we do have those conversations a lot, but I feel like when I can get them on the podcast, the world can see the conversations mm -hmm. that we have. And even if it's three people watching, I'm cool with that. Like, yeah. it doesn't matter. Like, the views, it's cool. Yeah, obviously, like, you coming on, like, obviously, I, you know, we're going to get some views on it. Okay. And, I, and, and I appreciate <laughs> that. Like, that's... You're helping me out, right? Mm -hmm. And and hopefully, no, and and you are, man. Like, I have 371 subs, right? Mm -hmm. like, so like, compared to what you got, right? So like, but that's cool that you would take your time to come out here and, and have this. But like, people want to know what you're up to, right? So like, I think it's a good deal, like, like that we do these things. Mm -hmm. Um, with that, 
you know, we're going to do some final thoughts here. Is there any advice you as a 24, 23, 23 year old woman? Um, maybe there's a younger woman, you know, young woman out there and she's scared, right? Like mm-hmm. doesn't know what like path she wants to mm-hmm. follow. Like what advice would you give somebody younger than you that maybe their Melanie five years ago, you know, what, what could you offer for advice to them? I would say don't listen to other people in the form of them telling you like, you should do this or you should do that. Or I don't think that's really a career or that's not going to make you a lot of money or like, it's not going to give you the life that you want. Even though money is like a big part of like, I guess a lot of people say money is not ha- like they're not going to give you a happy life, but it somewhat does. Right. But it's not the it's a small portion of a happy life. If you have a job that feels like a job, it's, you're not going to be happy. Right. If you go to work. Not thinking it's a job, just being like, oh, like, I'm so excited to go to work. I'm going to be doing this. I'm going to be doing that. That's the best part. Of, like, finding yourself, I guess you can say. Right. So, like, if you have a passion, if you have a dream, follow it. Like, it's going to take you somewhere. Right. So. Pretty good. Yeah. Good uh, Good advice. Um, <clears throat> listen to your heart. Listen to your heart. As cliche as it is. <laughs> right, right. But, I mean, that's what we don't do as people, yeah. right? So, like, really good advice. Um, I want to thank you for coming on. Thank you I appreciate me. you taking the time. Um, and it's so amazing to see. This is just the beginning, dude. Mm-hmm. Like, like, I wish you so much success. Like, Thank you. It's so awesome to. Uh, one, to see you blossom as a young woman. Uh, you, know, you, know, I, you know, I don't have a sister's right. Mm-hmm. Like, so like you and Carla and Melly are like the closest things that I have to. Right. Yeah. And my cousin Priscilla and like, yeah. you know, like on my mom's side, like so to see what I think someone so young following their heart and their passion, like that's beautiful, dude. Like yeah. and I appreciate you showing the world that dreams can come true. Yeah. And rock on and i i wish you nothing but the best and thank you for being here okay thank you for having me (laughs) thank you baby (laughs) wait you're drunk oh yeah you know before we end it here um, it's not done it's not done but but so uh, i don't know if you can see it yeah 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 Uh, so that's the open road uh melanie kind of did a uh a logo for me right Look at that. That's Look at it. so cool. So that's on plexiglass? Yes. Yeah. So. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> my, my mom literally told me when I was getting out, she's like, don't let the wind blow it. And I was like, don't tell me that. Don't put it in the air. <laughs> <coughs> that's so awesome. Um, yeah, you paint it backwards. Wow. <laughs> so, God, we're about to end this, but now I want to ask more questions. I mean, you can continue. Right. I, so, I um, <laughs> would you consider doing tutorials on these things i would consider doing tutorials if people are wanting to watch them all right so if anybody would like uh for melanie to start tutorials on drawing and and um like her to go a little deeper into these drawings um just comment below and like let her know and if you hit us with a bunch of likes on the thing then we'll know that's what you guys want right um i appreciate everybody watching the channel um if you guys have been the open road followers that started, you know, back with me and, you know, back in the day, like, I appreciate you for being here. Anybody who's new, then welcome to the channel. Um, I would say, Melanie, give out your information, but basically, like, no, that, that doesn't make any sense because you have all, like, the people coming in, right? So, like, <laughs> <laughs> so, like, I mean, <laughs> like, I usually tell people, well, how can they follow you? And it's not like that. This is reversed at this point. Like, so. <laughs> 
So if you want to follow Open Road, follow me, right? But um, I appreciate you so much. And uh, all right, we're gonna we'll cut it here. Thank you so much. Okay? Thank you for coming. Thank you.